Hello and welcome back to the Genealogy Radio Show, the show that is keeping you in the loop. We are from Radio Cork in beautiful Kilkee, and this show is repeated on a Sunday. For those who don't catch the broadcast, the show will be available as a podcast. Thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoy our show. So today we will be delving into the stories of Irish immigrants, mainly through letters, which are a vital primary source. Irish immigrants, many of whom were Catholic, left Ireland in search of a better life in the opening decades of the 19th century. During the years of the famine, the number of Irish immigrants increased rapidly. A large migration resulted from mass famine caused by potato blight, which was exacerbated by British policy. Simultaneously, Irish immigrants, both men and women, began to establish themselves in their new nation, and the vast majority of them never returned to Ireland. The letters that immigrants wrote across the oceans to friends and relatives are one of the best sources for learning about the process of becoming an American. According to historians, 30 million letters from Irish immigrants made it all the way to Ireland. The letters home created a whole culture similar to storytelling, wherein the letters would be read to the household and used to share to the community news from one of their own in America. It created a sense of hope for a better life, and this image was hugely influenced by the experience of their loved ones who emigrated and left behind poverty and limited opportunities. At Cove, the Titanic carried 1,385 sacks of letters bound for America on its maiden journey. Funds or other gifts such as tickets, clothing or pictures were frequently sent home with letters. And in the 19th century, it is estimated that 260 million euro was sent home to Ireland. As a result of the American letter, a type of chain migration emerged where the immigrants were paying for their relatives' passage over the Atlantic to join them in the New World. Victor, could you tell us a bit more about the importance of first-hand accounts? Yeah, I'd love to. So the importance of letters, diary entries, and confessionals cannot be overlooked. There are often many facts and figures given about the famine and immigration, and we often look to these documents of facts. We often overlook the first-hand accounts of life before and during and after immigration, And when you combine these uh, first-hand accounts with facts and figures, we can give depth and perspective to an event that is a major one in our history and is often looked at through a numeric lens. We can be inclined to overlook the value of the letter writing as a process and the valuable emotions that were put into these documents. The function of these documents are varied and can help us in many different ways. They supply both public and arguably more important private information In the past, they helped to maintain a material and equally an emotional connection between those who have immigrated and those who have not. More importantly, it gives critical information and the first-hand experience of those who have already immigrated, sometimes this being the decider on whether a family or person chose to immigrate at all. As was so long ago and before uh, telephones were invented, letters served as a crucial document to knowing and keeping up to date with a relative or loved one's health and well-being. The absence of a letter could be like the harbor jarrah of death and could give rise to the fear that perhaps a loved one or relative has perished. Hence the absence of a letter, however, uh, hence the absence of a letter often came fear. However, the importance of a letter sometimes could not be fulfilled as at the time during the 19th century, correspondence through letters was a luxury for most. In 1830, just before the famine, a letter could cost as much as a week's wage for a laborer, which a large population of the country was at the time, and many of the people who immigrated were laborers. Again, just to showcase the importance of a letter and how valuable they were. I'll give you back to Eve now. Thank you for that, Victor. So we've looked into some of these sources and the letters particularly. Sarah, could you tell us a bit about what you found on the John Doyle letter? and what it can tell us about life in America as an Irish immigrant. Well, in the years after the Irish Revolution, many Irish immigrants to the United States were political radicals, including John Doyle's father, who participated in the Irish Republican Revolt against Great Britain in 1798 and later immigrated to Philadelphia. An eye-opening letter to the experience of an Irish immigrant is John Doyle writes home to Ireland 1818 by John Doyle. In this letter, Doyle describes his voyage over to America and his new life in America. Doyle describes his first few interactions with people in America and how their perceptions of him made him feel. This is a small excerpt from the letter. Their manner of receiving me was quite amusing. 
Pray, sir, are you not happy to have escaped from the tyranny of the old country? When you would deny the tyranny and give preference to home, they would look amazed and say, what, sir, would you not rather live in a free country than in slavery? In short, they imagine here that we cannot act or speak in Ireland, but as the authorities please. Their ignorance and presumption are disgusting, their manners worse. As to politeness and good nature, they are totally unknown, and though they all pretend to be well acquainted with the affairs of Europe, they are utterly, utterly ignorant of all transactions there, or at best know them imperfectly. He also describes the way he was treated in the workplace as an Irishman. He was scammed many a times. Here's one example of the times he was scammed. I drove about accordingly and was engaged by a bookseller to haul maps for him at $7 a week. This I done much to his satisfaction, but when the town was well supplied, he discharged me and instead of paying me my entire bill, he stopped $9 for maps, which he said I made him no return for. I had to look for justice, but was defeated for want of a person to prove my account. I lost the $9, which I reckoned to be 45 shillings. However, I got such an insight into the manners and customs of the natives while going among them with the maps as served me extremely. Doyle also speaks about how he feels after his six months, first six months in America and his thoughts about America in general compared to Ireland. One thing I think is certain that if the immigrants knew beforehand what they have to suffer for the first six months after leaving home, in every respect, they would never come here. However, an enterprising man, desirous of advancing himself in the world, would despise everything for coming to this free country. This is where he just he compares the freedom in America to the freedom of in Ireland. Where a man is allowed to thrive and flourish without having a penny taken out by government, no visits from tax gatherers, constables or soldiers, everyone at liberty to act and speak as he likes, provided it does not hurt another, to slander and damn government, abuse public men in their office to their faces, wear your hat in court and smoke a cigar while speaking to the judge as familiarly as if he was a common mechanic, Hundreds go unpunished for crimes for which they would surely hung in Ireland. In fact, they are so tender of life in this country that a person should have very great interest to get himself hanged for anything. Thanks for that, Sarah. So that's a really good primary source. And another one of these sources that we found was the Curtis family letters. So one of those letters was from Hannah Curtis to her brother, John Curtis, on November 24th of 1845. So Hannah writes to her brother in America, talking about the potato crisis that has begun and the harsh year they have ahead of them. She urges her brother to send some money and not to, this is a quote, forget his Christian duties. So there's a clear tension here, which is caused by the financial pressures in Ireland at this time. And this letter shows the dynamic within many Irish families. There was often a reliance on the family member who had emigrated to financially support those at home. And we have another letter from that collection. Um, if you could share with us, Kean, how the William Dunn letters convey the view of the Irish at home where immigration was concerned. First, on April 25th, 1846, William Dunn wrote to his nephew, John Curtis, who had emigrated to Philadelphia from Ireland to escape the famine. The letter informs us that John was able to bring his parents with him to America. William also makes statements on the state of Ireland at the time commenting on the food shortages and lack of employment to be found. He reads as thus. Dear John, I read your kind letter of the 31st of December, which gave us all great pleasure to hear from you and all friends. And I'm glad to hear of yourself getting your health so well and of your father and mother being satisfied with their journey. I think they went in a good time for the like of this kingdom at the present it is not to be found. I believe there is, not, there is neither employment nor food the people is in a starving state and dying in hundreds in the streets of Belfast crowded. William went on to write a second letter to John Curtis on the 16th of November, 1846, and quickly explained the, de the deteriorating situation in Ireland, remarking that he himself was starting to suffer from the effects of the famine. That was fortunate that John and his family were able to leave when they did, saying, the good job that your mother and family went to time that they did, for there is nothing here but hardship and starvation or, or potato crop is all over Ireland this year, but I suppose you've heard of it, that there is not one stem of potatoes in my house just three months. It's very seldom that there does come one to market at all. What do, and what comes in not worth buying, they can't be, be easily. They sell at eight or nine shillings per hundred. 
for William like William, for people like William Dunn, the act of emigration was seen as a fortunate turnaround for many during the time when prospects for work and even food at home were next to nil. It was also a chance for those behind to perhaps, to perhaps rely upon the goodwill and earnings of those relatives abroad. However, this also, this also put immense distance between relatives who were used to seeing each other on a regular basis, and a division was sometimes wide and far enough that correspondence was lost altogether. Thank you for that, Kian. So next I'm going to ask Chloe, are there any secondary sources we have regarding life for Irish immigrants through diaries and letters? Yes, certainly. So Oceans of Consolation is a secondary source that contains some of the letters showcasing stories and lives of 14 Irish immigrants who travelled to Australia and a life for their families back in Ireland in the mid to late 19th century. This book was written back in 1994 by David Fitzpatrick, an Australian-born Irish historian and a former professor of modern history at Trinity College in du Dublin. The title comes from a quote from a letter from one of the immigrants discussed in this book to his father back in County Clare. The title comments the book as these letters were sent as a form of comfort for people receiving the letters, both in Ireland and Australia, alongside other gifts like newspapers and photographs that were sent to show family about life in each country. In this book, there are 111 letters, 55 sent to Australia and 56 sent to Ireland. It sent between 1833 and 1930. 01, with the majority of the letters being sent in the 1850s, 1860s, and were categorized into four categories. News from Australia gathers the lively and thoughtful responses of three Irish immigrants settling in New South Wales, South Australia, and Queensland. Victorian voices followed five immigrants or immigrant families that lived in Victoria between 1853 and 1809, no, 1890, which coincides with the 1850s Victorian gold rush. News from home showcased letters sent from Ireland to Australia and provided an insight into Irish life at this time. And Ulster accents were letters sent to Australia that showcased the distinctive economic, social and religious elements of Ulster at this period of time. The demographics of each of the 14 Irish immigrants are as followed. Nine of them were male and five were female with the medium age of 26 for males and 19 for females and age range from 14 to 29. 10 of them were Catholic and four of them were Protestants. And six of them came from Munster, two from Clare, two from Tipperary, one from Kerry and one from Cork. Four came from Ulster, from counties Down, Tyrone, Armand, Tremana. Three from Leinster, from counties Meath, Dublin and Kings County, which is nowadays called Offaly and one from Galway. Five of them were married prior to leaving Ireland, with one of them becoming widowed during or just after emigrating to Australia. Twelve of them found partners after arriving in Australia, one of them married an Australian born, two married people from their own counties, and the rest married partners of Irish backgrounds. Ten of the immigrants came from small medium farms. One of them father was a baker, another was an army pensioner, one was a shopkeeper, and one was an accountant. At this time, being an account, daughter of an accountant was a regular to the norm. However, Isabel, one of our immigrants described, was orphaned at a young age and emigrated to Australia as a servant. All 14 immigrants emigrated to Australia between 1834 and 1880, with 10 of them occurring during the period of peak migration between 1850 and 1856, no, 1865. Ten of them were assisted by the British government. Two of them were unassisted. One was sent over to work in Australia to send money back to Ireland to help their families. And one emigrated to Australia as a convict. Five of them arrived in Victoria, which four more later moving to Victoria while one of them moved out of the state. Four went to New South Wales, four went to Queensland and one moved to South Australia. Thanks, Chloe. We're going to hear from Jack next about how the document showing why and how people financially immigrated to America. All right, yeah, so I'm going to be using Gerard Moran's book, The History of the Irish Famine. Um, in particular, like it has a lot of documents that can work. And in particular with what I will be talking about is how it shows people, how they funded themselves, them great. 
So in the first document I have here is a document about a petition from a widowed mother who wishes to send her son over to America and needs financial assistance from their landlord to achieve so. So in this, it's petition from Margaret Cassidy, a widow, to W.S. Trench 1, Lord Shirley's agent, uh, to, uh, dated April 1846. Um, so in this uh, document, it um, she has it, it starts off with this. She has a young man, her son, whom she intends to send to America as she is not able to provide for him at home. She wishes to do so because she uh, she wants to give her eldest son the most amount of land, particularly due to the fact that because of the uh, famine or the blight, uh, on her potatoes um, has led her to have no money. And so she doesn't have money to send him over. So she's petitioning to the landlords and the agents um, for money so that she can send her over. So um, in this thing, uh, in this document, um, it, shows, uh, it shows a couple aspects of the famine. First, it shows off the absentee by on how she's petitioning to the agent, not the landlord, because the landlord isn't there. It also shows how uh, people traveled to um, America or whatever, because a lot of people were poor during the famine times. And so how could they afford what would be about five pounds, which would have been a decent amount of money at that time, how they have afforded that? Well, they afforded it so, um, they afforded it through a number of uh, things, either through assistance, through friends or family, or through their landlords, which is shown in this document where she appeals to this uh, person, and which she's granted so that her son uh, sends off her son to America so that she may keep her farm in Falvers entire for her eldest son. So in the second document I have here, um, is laborers in Co County Mayo contribute to a general fund and every two weeks names were selected and passages fares provided for a laborer and his family to emigrate to North America. And this uh, part I'll just read out here. So great is the anxiety felt by the poor laboring classes in this part of Connacht to escape from a country where every effort of industry is crushed by the pressure of enormous poor rates and taxes and where the owners of land see seem determined not to come to any equitable accommodation with the tenant class to one where freedom and prosperity await them, that such of them as have employment of the drainage works here have adopted the following novel and extraordinary mode of enabling themselves to emigrate. It appears that they are paid fortnightly, and when they pay night arrives, about 300 of them assemble and pay six pence into a general fund. A number of tickets corresponding with the number of persons present are then placed in the hat, and of one of them, word America is written, all the rest being blank. A ballot then takes places, and the lucky drawer of the prize ticket has a pet passage to America paid for him, and receives a small sum to subsist him for a small time after landing there. So what this just shows is that another aspect of why people are leaving. The first part just uh, of emotional and like really just shows uh, the great want to leave, and, Thank uh, you, Jack. Oh. So that's a brilliant source we have there. And I really just wanted to thank all of our hosts for such a great show today. We are from Radio Cork Abashkin in beautiful Kilkee, and this show will be repeated on a Sunday as well as uploaded at a, as a podcast. This is the radio show that is keeping you in the loop, and we hope you enjoyed our show today. <laughs>